pots can feel like the pits, right? It is no fun feeling lightheaded, nauseated, having your heart race or worse, you can't even stand up. This is one of the most challenging diagnoses to get and treat, but Dr. Maggie says she eats it for breakfast. <laughs> she has a big appetite, right? <laughs> and she is here to tell you something that your conventional doctor definitely won't. Apparently I eat a lot of breakfast. <laughs> uh, yes. Pots. A lot of people don't even know what that is. And when you actually spell out what the whole word is, is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Say that 10 times fast, you out there. Now, not only do a lot of people don't know what it is, but a lot of people don't even know what is the root cause of it. Newsflash, it's related to autoimmunity. So today, let's crack the case. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Autoimmune Table Talk Live, talking about POTS today. I'm your co-host, Anna Manuel. I'm Dr. Maggie Yu. I am a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform Protocol to turn around any autoimmune issue naturally. We also have a Facebook group, Transform Autoimmune Disease Naturally. We are almost at 65,000 members in that group. So if you're interested in joining our community, click the link above or below this video, depending on where you're watching from, so you can join the group and get in on the action. I'd love to uh, learn more about you. Right now, all of you guys that are watching right now, I'd love for you to, in the comment section, tell me where you're watching from. Tell me what autoimmune struggles you're dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. I love talking with you. I don't like talking at you. So I'd love to learn more about you. Let's comment away in the comment section. If you're an alumni or someone has done one of our programs, I'd love to hear from you and what autoimmune struggles you've overcome in the comment section. That'd be really great. All right. So POTS is one of these that has a lot of symptoms, mm -hmm. but it's really hard to get a diagnosis for. Can we talk about exactly what is POTS? Well, what is it? I mean, and all of you listening out there start to think about this and checklist it in your head and start writing in the comment section. How many of you have an autoimmune diagnosis, or you may not even have an autoimmune diagnosis, but you have tons of symptoms, but you got symptoms of dizziness, vertigo, um, fast heart rate, blood pressure drops, uh, and sometimes nausea. And when you get up, you feel like you're dizzy or you're, and it happens all the time. And I'm going to tell you something. How many of you out there get car sick or seasick really easily? Did you know that's actually linked to people who have POTS? Do you know certain people with autoimmunity are really prone to that and that it's linked for your predisposition or your likelihood for having POTS? That is fascinating. Well, you don't hear that anywhere. I don't think you can repeat that enough. Car sickness could be a warning sign or a symptom of POTS. That is correct. And we will go into it. But I want to know right now in the audience, how many people, based on the list of symptoms that I've talked about, already know that you have some of those symptoms, already have been trying to tell your doctors you've had those symptoms. And how many of you now are for the first time light bulb moments like, oh my God, it's linked to my other issues with autoimmunity. Yeah, it is. Uh, and that's the problem. How many people, in my experience, at least 40 to 50% of people with any autoimmune disease can have one or many of these symptoms I just discussed. Mm -hmm. And yet few, if any of them, ever really get a diagnosis of POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Notice in the name, they specifically are referring to orthostatic means blood pressure changes when you change position tachycardia means fast heart rate. So there is a definition for what fulfills clinically for this diagnosis. But yet, how many of you have symptoms that are the exact symptoms I talk about? And you may not have the blood pressure drop, or you may not have the positional dizziness all the time and only sometimes. That doesn't neatly fit into that diagnostic criteria, but you still have tons of symptoms. And so Getting a diagnosis can be really difficult because there's a clinical criteria for it and there's specific types of testing that can be done. Guess where? At a cardiology office. And is that the right spot for that? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> this is the big problem, man, is a lot in our conventional regular doctor world, regular doctors frequently dismiss these symptoms. How many of you have talked to your regular doctor and had those dismissed? Right. Secondly, 
right? And I'm, and secondly, how many of you have tried to go to the doctor and then you get immediately referred to a cardiologist, a heart doctor? Again, I mentioned this is autoimmune related. What does a heart doctor know about autoimmunity? Not very much. Zilch. <laughs> so um, it's just, oh, you got this heart issue. And there's no understanding that this, the causes of this is actually from the autoimmunity, right? Mm -hmm. So as a result, people go to the cardiologist, they may get a workup, they may not. If they do get a workup, it'll be the tilt table test. And we'll even talk about that. Um, but sometimes people lack access to the cardiologist um, to get the test done. Sometimes the test isn't even done properly. And number three, many people, even if they do the test, may be partially positive, but not fully, partial, um, fully positive to qualify for the diagnosis. And yet you really do have this problem. You really have these symptoms and you are really shit out of luck. Because I'm wondering, even if you are, let's say, lucky enough to get the diagnosis uh, after mm -hmm. dealing with all these symptoms, is there any kind of an effective treatment? No. And that's the thing is because they're not treating what's causing it. Like the, the cardiologist has no clue this is related to your autoimmunity. Yet, I mean, people are filling the comments um, with how they are having these symptoms. And I'd love how many of you out there have gone through this diagnostic rigmarole trying to get a diagnosis and have fallen into one of these like abyss that I talk about where you don't really have the diagnosis or you can't get the diagnosis or you can't see the cardiologist. How many of you are in that boat and yet your life is so severely affected? Something's got to be done. And how many of you have been told that you're crazy for Cocoa Puffs, you're having anxiety attacks, you need an antidepressant? I mean, it right? can be really serious. Somebody said they they fell down and broke their leg because they're passing out when they stand up. I mean. Well, and Lynn's comment is really key here because she has the diagnosis and she's still freaking passing out and breaking her leg. So it goes to even when you get the diagnosis, get what the treatment is. Cardiology drugs which the most common treatment is what we call a beta blocker, which is designed to slow down the fast heart rate, the tachycardia. But guess what it also does? Uh, Ooh. something to your blood pressure lowers your blood pressure. Wouldn't lowering your blood pressure make these symptoms worse. It would feel that way. And there are some other treatments where people are like, Oh, eat more salt, eat more salt, eat more salt. Or they're prescribed a drug like mineral corticoids designed to raise more salt in your body or something just to increase that blood pressure. But the problem is when you eat a lot of salt or you take a lot of mineral corticoids, you can swell up like a balloon. It's not a long-term solution to be eating a packet of salt every day or something. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? But what's really causing the problem? And the answer is not going to be going to see the cardiologist or the cardiology drugs are going to prescribe you. It's not going to help you. I know this, this mother says- Whoa, that. there she is. Right. She has to eat salt to keep her blood pressure up, but she's getting so dizzy still. Clearly, it's not helping. Right, yeah, uh, try giving a teaspoon, uh, two teaspoons of salt to your kid every single day. Is that a good solution? And if it worked, maybe, but it's not working. And that's the frustration. How many of you have received treatment, quote unquote, for POTS, and it's not working? That's the problem here. Uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. Because it seems to me that you're just trying to treat symptoms here that are also then creating other problems and you're not dealing with root cause. Well, and the thing is, the way we've designed the kind of doctors you go to is the problem. We have in the regular doctor world, you got a problem. There's a specific specialist you should go to, and they're the specialist in this little narrow area. That's supposed to be your solution. Mm -hmm. Now, think about all the different types of doctors that people with POTS get sent to. Because number one is most commonly we say the cardiologist, right? But some people will be like, oh, um, cardiology says is negative, but I'm sitting here with Hashimoto's and rheumatoid arthritis. I'm going to go talk to my rheumatologist about this. Your rheumatologist, all they care is about your joints and whether they're going to prescribe you Humira at Plaquenil or not. They don't give a rat's ass about the fact that you're dizzy and fainting when the cardiologist said there's nothing wrong, right? Now you're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs category. Or number three, you're dizzy, right? And then you go get, get to see the ear, nose, and throat doctor. The mm -hmm. ear, nose, and throat doctor, they do all these examinations, ear, nose, and throat, and they say, oh, nothing looks, nothing looks wrong. Well, it's not coming from your ear, nose, and throat. So then, oh, you get sent back to primary care doctor, and then you get sent to the psychiatrist who's like, oh, yeah, all those doctors said there's nothing wrong with you. Let's get you some antipsychotics. So now you've seen four specialists, you're very frustrated, and you're yeah. not getting any closer to feeling better. That is correct. 
And then people say, well, I'm desperate. And now I'm going to go to Johns Hopkins and Mayo Clinic because they have a POTS clinic and we could get all this and all that. Well, okay, 10, 20, 30, $40,000 later traveling over there, getting the million dollar workup. You may or may not qualify for the diagnosis. Let's say you, they, they're like, aha, after that, you got diagnosed with POTS. Oh, let's put you on these cardiology meds. Mm. They come to us after going through all these doctors, Mayo, Johns Hopkins, and that. After that, 10 years, $10,000, $100,000, and 10 years of disability and all the suffering, they then come to me and only to find out it's none of those problems. It's an autoimmune issue that is solvable, and I can eat it for breakfast. <laughs> With your big appetite. <laughs> no, but it's true. And so many people are coming to you and saying, Mayo couldn't help me. Johns Hopkins yeah. couldn't help me. And they feel like if that place can't help me, who can? Right. Wow. And, and I have people telling me all the time, like when we, we talk to people who are interested in our program, they talk to us after seeing a video like this, they say, you're my last hope. You're my last stop. But I can tell you overwhelmingly, we've dealt with hundreds and hundreds of people with POTS and turned it around. And when we interview, and we have case studies up the wazoo of people with POTS and, and all sorts of other autoimmune issues that for me are very easy to solve. Right. And then predominant thing they say about this is I wish I had found you earlier. I wish you were my first stop and not my last stop. And so that's why I love the fact that we're doing this video because how many of you are going to go making me the last stop when it can be your first stop is what I'm saying. And I love this format where we can talk about this and educate you about this because what you're going to hear today and underlying causes and how I deal with POTS is things you have never heard anywhere else. No one is treating POTS this way as an autoimmune issue with underlying root causes. Because I'm curious, I'm seeing so many people comment, Dr. Maggie, how common would you say this issue is of having POTS and all these symptoms? So in the literature, if you look at it, if you look in the conventional medical world, it's apparently a really rare, super rare autoimmune, a uh, non-autoimmune, super rare disorder mm. affecting very small percentage of the population. Well, really? Because here's the thing, if it was really that rare, how many of you wouldn't be commenting the hell out of this? This has been one of our most popular posts, one of our most popular lives. We, uh, You guys have been commenting up the wazoo under our social media posts around this. This is a big problem. But if they don't know how to diagnose it and they don't know how to treat it, it doesn't really exist. So in my experience dealing with autoimmune uh, patients with autoimmunity, at least 40 to 50% of you, and I, and I do this, I, I ask people when I'm teaching a mastermind call, how many of you dealing with ABCD symptoms and how many of you been diagnosed with POTS? At least 50% of people will raise their hand every single time. Mm -hmm. So I really, I know as a fact that at least 50% of people with autoimmunity have POTS and POTS related type symptoms. Okay. They may not qualify for that official diagnosis, but they got it, which then goes back down to root causes. Why is this so common for people with autoimmunity? Mm -hmm. So I let's shred this everybody. I mean, how many of you guys are, how many of you guys watching this is resonating with you? And it's like, ding, 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 ringing a bell. Is there an aha moment in what I just said? Let's talk about underlying. Why do people with autoimmunity get so much POTS? Well, because Whatever is causing POTS, could it be a target of autoimmune attack? Because think about, think about this. Like, could it be that when, you, when I think about it, I'm going to tell you guys in general terms, there's actually an enzyme in your brainstem uh, that is responsible for creating chemical for balance, okay? Over 50% of autoimmune disease, when you test for that particular enzyme, have antibodies, which means autoimmune attack against that destination, that target. So if you're attacking the enzyme that's producing a substance necessary for balance, wouldn't you be dizzy? Yes. And this goes back to perhaps what you were saying at the beginning about car sickness as well. So what they have found out is, is that one of the most common symptoms of people carrying this antibody is actually car sickness, being sick all the time. Right. Uh, and so I'm just going to tell you right now, all of you guys with pot symptoms, all of you with autoimmunity, how many of you have get really easily car sick? How yeah. many of your kids get easily car sick? You likely have this antibody, which means you are autoimmune attacking that enzyme that's causing this problem. And they actually have found that with people with autoimmunity, this particular antibody is 
it exists in at least like 60, 70% of people with autoimmunity are positive for an autoimmune attack against this enzyme. And so when I'm hearing this and a lot of people at home are hearing this and they're thinking, oh, well, should I go get tested for that? Well, I can tell you right now, at least 70% of you, if not more, is already positive. Right. So, so what if you get tested for this? You already know you have this problems because you got the symptoms. So for me, it's like, and I mean, so many people are just like, I'm going to go spend a million dollar workup to get every antibody on the planet, possibly tested on the planet. The issue is, is that you're going to 70% of you are going to come back positive. The answer is still, so what, how are you going to end it? Mm-hmm. I am totally against a diagnostic merry-go-round wasting more of your time, your resources. When you okay. can just fix the problem. Correct. Because here's the thing, like you, there are multiple causes, but can there be an autoimmune attack against that enzyme? Yes. Can there be an autoimmune attack against some of the nerves that's innervating the inner ear? The inner ear is responsible for balance. Can that be a different mechanism that causes you to be dizzy or car sick all the time? That's also a mechanism. Can there be an autoimmune attack against uh, your hormone making organs, like your adrenals, which is actually responsible for heart rate, blood pressure, metabolism. Can people have an autoimmune attack against hormone making organs like the adrenals and people with really compromised adrenals don't have the ability to raise their blood pressure and adjust their blood pressure as a result of positional change. Therefore they get symptoms. There's another mechanism. I know I'm going through this really fast and there's a lot of scientific stuff going on, but I want to make sure you guys clearly understand. I know what the hell causes it. Mm -hmm. And it's not one thing. There's actually probably about 60 different ways with which an autoimmune issue can actually trigger symptoms related to POTS. And I just told you three. Well, and and perhaps even more impactful, not only do you know what causes it, but you know how to address it. That is correct. When, and that's the whole point, right? I'm not asking you to go get another diagnostic merry-go-round workup. I don't even care if you get a tilt table test or not. If you have these symptoms and you have autoimmunity, let's talk about what's underlying root causes in our five pillars protocol. So when I think about the five pillars of transform, every single pillar has something that really addresses the underlying root causes of POTS, which brings me back to, this is why POTS is one of the easiest diagnosis in our program or symptoms in our program to turn around fast and early in the program, because the root causes of autoimmunity in our five pillars protocol addresses every root cause underlying POTS. Get the fork out. She's hungry for breakfast. <laughs> okay, let's bring on some case studies. Okay, so I what I would love to do is we have um, a recent graduate and someone who graduated our program almost three years ago, and they have had. I want to bring on case studies, real people, real journeys, real outcomes to actually demonstrate uh, what can happen and what are the underlying root causes. So let's bring Christina and <laughs> Dana on. Welcome, you two. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having us. Okay, everybody. I love, Christina, I'd love for you to do a quick intro for the audience. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Well, I've been dealing with autoimmune issues for going on 35 years now. I was diagnosed with lupus when I was 16. And then from there, I've just kind of accumulated more diagnoses. Uh, I was diagnosed with Sjogren's syndrome. um, And then about 2015, I started experiencing problems with swallowing. Mm -hmm. um, Then just stomach, severe stomach cramping whenever I ate. Uh, and was eventually in 2016 diagnosed with gastroparesis, partial paralysis of the stomach. And it was recommended that I go on a low fiber, low fat diet. Um, my background is I'm a lactation consultant, but I also have a degree as a health educator. And I just knew from my professional experience, and my, my background education, that that didn't sound like a healthy diet. Um, so from 2016, into 2017, I was trying to, you know, manage my diet in a way that I wouldn't be in pain all the time. Um, But so the diet was basically just simple carbs. And I was just feeling worse and worse. I was losing weight. I felt like crap. And I kept asking the doctors, like, surely, like, I must have some nutritional deficiencies here, because this is not a healthy way to eat. And they'd say, Oh, go drink, go drink an insure. (laughs) trying all kinds of elimination diets and trying to figure out what were my food triggers. And I was starting to have the dizzy spells. I was, I had always had headaches with my autoimmune issues, but the, the headaches were getting worse. Any kind of physical activity, my head would be pounding. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So think about this, guys. I mean, Christina is a healthcare is, is a healthcare professional. And number two, uh, she could not get a diagnosis in her area. She couldn't get a tilt table test. So she mm -hmm. got um, the blanket term, what we call dysautonomia, which is another term for really POTS related symptoms. So how many of you out there have dysautonomia and realize this is related to POTS? If anything, it's just another name for it. Um, so I, we're going to dig in more with Christina's journey, but she's three years graduate out of her program. So, oh, four, has it been four years, girl? Four and a half. Um, okay. We're going to get into your four and a half years. So there's a whole, are you going to get better? And then is it sustainable? I'm going to, can't wait to an, a, answer that. Dana, I'd love for you to introduce yourself, our recent graduate. Yes. I graduated from the program three months ago. And uh, definitely have been loving the results. But I am 26. I'm based in New York City. And I've definitely struggled with autoimmune issues for most of my life. But they really hit the fan starting in 2015 when I had a bad case of MRSA. Mm -hmm. And I went on a ton of antibiotics. I think just really messed up my microbiome and caused just the floodgates to open. Mm -hmm. So after that, I had a lot of gastrointestinal infections. I contracted Shigella and SIBO. I was on the FODMAP diet for over a year trying to get that cleaned up, which was definitely not the decision I should have been going with. <laughs> um, poor advice on that front. But I, from there, just got severe brain fog. Mm -hmm. I, like my menstrual cycle stopped for over a year. Yep. I, and I used to be a really high achieving student. Luckily I had finished school at this time, but I just felt like I couldn't say my ABCs. I that just felt like my brain escaped from me. Right. And I went to a ton of different doctors um, saying like, I'm having dizziness spells, headaches. It's hard for me to get up in, in the morning in particular. And yep. I just got put on antidepressants and anti-anxiety yeah. meds. And I knew that that wasn't, the answer. And I kept pushing, kept pushing. And I finally found this wonderful doctor based in New York, who's a neurologist and focuses on autoimmunity as well. And I went in and he get, did do a tilt table test and diagnosed me with POTS. Mm -hmm. And at the same time did some nerve conduction tests and a few other things and diagnosed me with CIDP, which is chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, which yep. means that my immune system is attacking the myelin sheath around my nerves. Nerves. Yeah. So that's what Everyone was causing a lot of tingling and pain, mostly in my extremities. And if you don't address that over time, it really affects your mobility. So you have nerves in your inner ear too, Dana. For yeah, they're everywhere. Right. <laughs> so, true. so it's like CIDP, like neuropathy. All of you guys with neuropathies. It could possibly be related to an autoimmune attack against the nerves in your, in your ears. And the answer is when I run a chicken dinner. Yes, absolutely. Sure. So that's there's a total lack of understanding for that. And I bet you your CIDP doctor had no idea that it was even linked to your POTS. Right. I don't think you did. I'm sure you thought them semi-separate. Right. They're not separate. And we, we actually have specialists who are very narrow in their scope, treating these problems as if they're separate and related problems, adding more and more drugs to you, along with the psychiatry drugs that they were loading you up on from that specialist. Correct? Oh, yes. So I want to ask, because Dana's journey is interesting, because I remember the very first day I met you, this is like four or five months ago. Yeah. You said that one of the outcomes that you wanted from the program was you wanted to be a functional human being and to end your POTS. Yeah. And my question was, how long did it take from the start of the program to when you first noticed that you mm -hmm. didn't have these POTS symptoms anymore? So I started the first week of February. Mm -hmm. It took me until probably the end of March to realize that my POTS symptoms were gone before the end of February. I kid you <laughs> so not. It was four weeks in the program. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Christina, I mean, you did the program four and a half years ago. How long did it take you to get better from the pot symptoms for you and the autonomia? I think once we got back my blood work, looking <laughs> at some nutritional deficiencies, and you told me what supplements, what form of the supplements I needed to take, and I started on those supplements, I had improvement within a week. So that's week four also. It was and right about so, and, and how many years did you deal with those symptoms, uh, Christina, and how many years for you, Dana? The, the dysautonomia symptoms, it was a year. One year? Been, and then Dana, how For me, you? it was at least 10. I was fainting in high school all the time. Think about this, everybody. These problems that could be a, a decade long for a 26-year-old within four weeks ended. 
I mean, that's uh, that's an unheard of. And then clearly they had been to so many different doctors, not getting many answers, finally then getting an answer, at least in one one case here, but still not getting any help and then can turn it around in a matter of weeks. Right. I know and that was probably your hope, both of you, when you came into the program, but was it still kind of surprising to you? Oh, yeah. Definitely. I was really just coming to Dr. Maggie. I had been stalking her while I was going through the diagnosis process, trying to get some answers and, and seeing the cardiologist, I was, I was stalking her page and debating joining the program. And I started out um, just wanting to try and widen the amount of foods I was eating. I wasn't even, you know, expecting all of the results. I got. Yeah. And so let's go into the nitty gritty because people out there want like the secret sauce. Like uh, Christina, let's start with you. What do you, you said, as soon as you got your blood work, we're talking about blood work. That's part of our program. We're talking about functional lab values. She got educated on what some of the root causes of these vitamin deficiencies are that are really crucial for anybody with any autoimmune issue. So you, what was so illuminating about the blood work that was a game changer for your pots? Uh, well, for starters, I had always been told that I had really great iron levels, but when you <laughs> dug into like ferritin and some other values, I realized yeah it was in the toilet. It was yeah. awful. And then um, I learned that B12 is one of the finicky, most finicky vitamins to absorb. And with my digestive issues with the gastroparesis, it was no surprise Bingo. that my B12 was terrible, but I'd never been told to take B12. In fact, my rheumatologist actually argued with me when I started <laughs> on the B12 and the iron trying to tell me like, why are you taking this? This is completely unnecessary. Your iron's fantastic. And I said, I feel so much better since I've been on them. I'm going to keep taking them. Well, here's the thing. Your rheumatologist has zero training in functional values of what's optimal for someone with autoimmune disease. So based on your lab values, I recommend it. And you learned exactly the right supplement and dosing you should take and how to recheck it and manage it for the rest of your life. You had immediate results. Yeah. So I'm going to get into what would cause someone with autoimmunity to have really low ferritin and iron. But before we do that, and I'm going to say pss, digestion, but Dana, you <laughs> had mentioned that digestion was huge for you. Can you explain that part of yeah, your, uh -huh. for sure. I mean, just thinking about some of my symptoms beforehand, I had lost a lot of weight. Yeah. And I think part of it was due to, I was on the food map, FODMAP diet for over a year. And I just got afraid of food and what to eat. And I think I just also wasn't absorbing things right because as it turns out, I, I do lack some uh, digestive enzymes. But Correct. I realized once I started the program, I started to take those digestive enzymes with the food that I was eating. So I was mm -hmm. able to absorb it well. But I also learned what foods I could eat by doing the food mapping. And that you know fear of food kind of went away. So that helped a bit with me being able to get those nutritions from my food and even not just the supplements. So this is the double whammy. And I love that we're having this discussion because both you and Christina went on some very restrictive diets for a long time that made you guys mm -hmm. sicker. And that could be FODMAP, AIP, whatever it is. But there's mm -hmm. the problem here is that digestion was, so there's food mapping, food that you're sensitive to, but there's a separate issue here, digestion. And digestion was the key for both of you here in this problem. Let's first step that. And you mentioned taking the correct digestive enzyme, digest it. We're, we're talking mm -hmm. about digest it. And that's part of our autoimmune essentials line. Why is it essential? Because guess what? A hundred percent of you out there with autoimmunity have terrible digestion genetically. Mm -hmm. And I've mentioned this, uh, and Christina, you know, like, did you guys know that anybody with any autoimmune diagnosis, you genetically already have a 90% chance of having low stomach acid, which is mm -hmm. the first step in digestion. And there's many, okay? Mm -hmm. So if 90% of you coming in already have that, and then Christina mentioned the vitamin B12 and the, and the iron, both of those require really high levels of stomach acid or adequate levels of stomach acid to even absorb. So Christina, you weren't even absorbing, even if you spent a million dollars on the Primo Super Supplements, if you weren't taking proper digestive enzymes to really absorb them, you're still shit out of luck because you weren't absorbing it. And Dana's case, she's sitting here doing a FODMAPS diet, really limited elim elimination diet that already really decreased the amount of diversity in her diet and phytonutrients in it. And then, and then she discovered during the program, what digestive issue did you have? 
I mean, so many, but for me, it's low stomach acid, but also um, lacking elast elastase. Right. So that's a pancreatic enzyme. So God, how important was this? Because here's the thing she could, Dana could do all the FODMAP diet she want, but without those the understanding of that digestive issue and starting to take digest it and learning about this herself, she, there was no solution in that. She was only going to get sicker and sicker because she couldn't even absorb the food that she was eating. That was already really vitamin deficient. Now on Christina's side of this, she also had gastroparesis and was losing weight, which means that the bowels didn't move very well. Now, yeah. if you don't digest your food in the first place, right, and you got these food that's undigested, full of allergens as well, we didn't even talk about food mapping next, how is this, your body's fighting a war with that food, how are you supposed to move that food or even absorb anything from it? It's like a rock sitting in your stomach. Mm -hmm. These are underlying causes. And yet their doctors aren't bringing this up at all. I mean, they're going to specialists as well. And I assume you guys didn't hear anything about digestive problems to this degree from your specialists. No, they just are. There is zero training on digestion within the conventional doctor world and even the functional world. I can tell you right now, many of you seeing functional doctors or naturopaths, are they telling you digestion is the holy grail in your autoimmunity or your POTS? No, I'm the only one. I know that. Um, but this is why POTS can be very easily solvable when you actually take the time to educate people about this. And you guys, there's a lot of training in the program around this and troubleshooting exactly what is your problem. Because Christina might have gastroparesis and low stomach acid, but Dana may have low pancreatic enzymes like elastase. Somebody else may not have a gallbladder and have a fat digestion problem. All of these severely impact on your ability to absorb and digest your food your water, your nutrients, that's crucial in calming down the autoimmune attack. So digestion is really big. Now, Dana mentioned food mapping. What about being allergic to certain foods or intolerant of certain foods? Christina, that was huge for you. Really huge. What did really you learn in the food ma mapping process? I mean, that's what you really stalked me for. And I, you thought, oh, I, everything's going to be the, just on food mapping. Um, right. What, what happened as a result of your food mapping? Um, the two biggies on my food mapping was I was intolerant of all things wheat and all things dairy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, um, borderline eggs. I re I, I, that was something that was also unique. Like I realized I don't have to totally eliminate eggs, but I got to kind of limit how many I eat. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a complete intolerance to the eggs. And I would have never figured that out with, doing a food diary. I would have never, or, you know, elimination diets. I would have never. A lot of these elimination diets sometimes even make people sicker because you might be on an elimination diet that doesn't eliminate the eggs. And then you eat more eggs because you've eliminated all these other foods and then you end up getting sicker. How many people out there have done that? Oh, yeah. right? I did that. <laughs> right. So, so many times I'm just telling you guys, I mean, we, I would love to do at some point a live on the shocking truth that people discover on food mapping. I had someone just this week on the mastermind call. Um, they thought they were doing the right thing all these years and they were gluten free and they were putting bananas, um, pineapple, eggs, uh, banana, pineapple and almond milk in their smoothie. And those are the three things they had the most problems with. And that was in none of the elimination diets. And it was like, God, it's and, and I said, would there have been any other way for you to have figured it out than doing this unique food mapping process, which is the blood test we do and all the training around digestion, uh, removal, reintroduction that we do is the whole process, food mapping. We're the only one on the planet doing food mapping. But within a couple of weeks, you had exact data telling you, oh my God, this was what was causing my problem the whole time. I didn't even need to be on FODMAP for a year. I didn't need to waste a year losing 20, 30 pounds on this elimination or that elimination diet. In fact, that diet was making me even more sick. <laughs> and I'm curious too, we're talking about digestion. How does blood sugar play into all of this? <laughs> 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 yeah, Christina, did you learn anything about your blood sugar? The gastroparesis diet is terrible for blood sugar. It's terrible. Nothing, nothing but simple carbs. And Dr. Maggie's program just really, the main program helped me learn how I could still manage my blood sugar while my gut was still healing. Right. 
But you could think about this, and, and I'm going to ask people in the Facebook group to actually comment in the comment section. How many of you now are starting to realize digestion was huge for you, is huge for you in pots, most likely? How many of you are starting to realize, oh my God, maybe it's food sensitivities that's going on? And number three right now, I'm going to explain why blood sugar is like holy grail for POTS. In fact, I would even say that the number one co underlying cause for POTS is blood sugar fluctuations. People with autoimmune disease are super sensitive to high and low blood sugar. And yet there's a lot of autoimmune reasons why they're really prone to high and then low, high and then low. Think about it. Every time your blood pressure goes, every time your blood sugar goes low, what happens to blood pressure? Does a swing high, low, high, low as well. What happens when that happens? These swings in high, low blood sugar also can cause your heart to go into fast, low, fast, low. So did you guys know that your POTS symptoms that's going on all the time is not random? These are not random acts of health violence. It's actually specifically fueled by the fluctuating blood sugar levels that's going on because you don't got blood sugar mastery down at all. And yeah, and, and a lot of these diets that people get put on autoimmune disease in the hospital or by your specialist or nutritionist is all this carb or blend diet or whatever, that causes your blood sugar to go really high and then your body will send insulin bringing it super low. Boom, more pot symptoms right there. Boom, more mm -hmm. gastroparesis right there. And Renell is saying digestion was a huge issue for her. I mean, Dana, how, how was blood sugar an issue for you? Blood sugar was the number one cause for my pot symptoms, 100%. That was the biggest game changer for me, I think even more so than digestion. Mm -hmm. um, and even just thinking about what I would do to help with my pots. Now, we mm -hmm. talked a lot about how salt is kind of, you know, the number one suggestion of just like, just increase your salt intake. And I would <laughs> do that whenever I feel like I was having my pot symptoms, I would usually go and turn towards my holy bag of corn chips that I would then pour more salt on. But all that is, is just carbohydrates. And as you learn in the program, if you don't have a balanced meal or you're balancing out your carbs with fats and protein, okay. it's going to cause you to have huge spikes in blood sugar and then drops in it. So what I thought was helping my pots would only help it temporarily and actually give me a way worse swing of pots within the next two or three hours. Yes. Winner, winner, was, chicken dinner. Even your doctor who specialized in diagnosing you with POTS wasn't filling you in on this. Did he, did he or she? I don't know this. Go yeah. ahead. Not didn't at all. talk to you about blood sugar though. Did anybody no. working with you on POTS give you dietary advice about food mapping, about digestion, or about blood sugar? Drink Gatorade and eat salt. Yeah, Pedialyte was my recommendation. <laughs> I'm a fan of the cursing words I almost guessed right there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's, it's maddening to me that this isn't happening out there. And so many of your lives out there who are watching right now is ruined by these symptoms of POTS when, this, when really what's needed to happen is education, training, and accurate data here. That's what's going on here. Some, somebody asked about infection and we're going over time, but somebody was really talking about, oh, a virus caused this. Oh, my infection with this caused POTS. No, it's actually kind of the other way around in a lot of ways. Think about this, and I'm going to tie it all into a neat bundle for you guys. If you have bad digestion, let's say you don't have stomach acid, you don't have pancreatic enzymes, you don't digest fat well. Do you know that digestion is the first step in defense against infecting organisms? Okay, so <laughs> did the infection cause the POTS or did the digestion cause the infection, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, this is like, for me, the order with which people learn things and implement things really matter. But yet, how many of you are spending thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars in years chasing the merry-go-round of an infection? It's the infection. It's, let's go kill the infection. Oh, my God, let's deal with candida for the 10th time. Let's deal with Lyme for the 10th time. I have chronic fatigue. I've seen bar for the 10th year in a row. What's the underlying cause of these infections? Poor digestion, bucko. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I, it's maddening to me, but I love being able to teach that connection. Is is like, this is why this program exists, is that there's an order. You got to learn about this. You got to implement in the right order. And then you may or may not ever have to do, address this infection. But yet people go and say, oh, yeah, the infection caused it. Um, really? Really? Um, and then, and this is to challenge you guys thinking about this, you know. And number two, blood sugar. If you are really prone to high and low blood sugar, so that means you go into really big highs, you're on these elimination diets, big carbs. Guess what you're doing? Your lovely diet's feeding infection mm -hmm. because infection loves high blood sugar.
And then when you go from high to low blood sugar, that's the swing, I call it. That swing from high to low or low to high triggers your immune system to fire more autoimmune attack against every target. You have to stop the cycle. You have to. I think what's so inspiring to me tonight and for probably hopefully so many people who are telling us all of the symptoms they're dealing with, Christina and Dana have been able to quickly and easily beat this. Yes. And so I wonder if both of you might just tell us, you mentioned your symptoms, but just tell us what was your life like when you were dealing with this and in the worst time, you know, in your lowest point dealing with this and how is it so different now? What are some of the things you're able to do now that you could have only dreamed about then, Christina? Um, the brain fog was terrible. The pounding headaches. I was stuck on the couch for days, sometimes barely able to move because my head was just pounding. Uh, one time my kids had to escort me out of Walmart because I almost fainted in the store. And, you know, they had to go sit me in the car and, and pour Gatorade into me. And it was just, you know, I just felt like a terrible mom. <laughs> um, and it's just, it, it, Dr. Maggie's program was just absolutely life-changing. Um, I have Two years ago, my cardiologist encouraged me to go off the mineral corticosteroid because guess what he told me? It's not good for your adrenals. And um, he, he's overjoyed with how well that I'm doing that. A year ago, he completely released me from care unless I need anything from him. Uh, and I would say probably over four years now, almost four and a half, I've maybe a handful of times experienced some slightly dizzy symptoms that quickly resolved because you know how to address it. Pleasure. <laughs> and I, I mean, that's, and that's four and a half years later. I mean, it goes into sustainability. A lot of people are like, oh yeah, they're better now, right after the program. When I tell people that our program is a launch pad. You're working with us two months online to get all this education, data, and understanding, but it's a launch pad to a year of autoimmune turnaround and a lifetime of autoimmune mastery, right? So, I mean, I love the fact that there's someone, I mean, Christina, four and a half years out yeah. and better and better and better. Yeah, absolutely. And now you can be that mom that you, you were feeling like you weren't able to be before. And I know that mm -hmm. that is priceless. And teaching my kids what I've learned so that they don't encounter the same issues. Huge. That's the genetic part of this. And I know Cherie is, mention Cherie is mentioning that she has the car sickness. How many of you guys with autoimmune disease have some of these symptoms, but notice that some of your kids are really easily car sick. Mm -hmm. And do you guys know, and this is speaking as a mom, that's something to look to as a warning sign that this kid might have an autoimmune, genetic autoimmune issue. Because if you think about it, if they have one parent autoimmune disease, um, their likelihood of having an autoimmune themselves is way over 50%. I'm just letting you know, it's anywhere from 50 to 90%. Okay. I'm just letting you guys know. So you guys are learning not just to help yourself, but you guys are seeing this manifest in your children uh, and yourself. Car sickness is a sign of early symptom of having an autoimmune attack against some of these nerves, some of the uh, blood sugar issues, all this. These are early signs that you don't want to miss. All right. And Dana, we're talking about kids. You were having problems when you were a kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. So talk to us about what life was like then versus now. It's just such a huge change. I mean, I think of even just the year before I started Dr. Maggie's program, I went to the ER three times for mm -hmm. extreme headaches and extremely high um, heart rate. Yeah. And, you know, since then, I haven't had an episode like that. And you just having that fear removed from you is so great. Cause oftentimes I felt so dependent on others. I and mean, I felt a burden onto my friends or family for having to, you know, take me along to the ER or to be like, okay, we're not going to go through with our plan today because Dana has to lay in bed. And it just made me lose a lot of luster for life. To be yeah. honest, I had severe depression from it. And mm. now I feel like I don't have to have that same fear of making plans or fear of being a burden because I'm not having fainting spells. I'm not getting crazy high heart rates. And it's just, again, this type of freedom that I didn't think I was going to find. 
you know, Dana selling herself short, because I want you guys to know that it's not just that she felt like it's not that you just felt like you were a burden on others. I mean, not everyone has supportive people around them that says, oh, you're going to go through this program. Great. I mean, some I mean, she didn't necessarily have the support of the people around her to say, oh, yes, you should do this program. In fact, it was like, really, you're going to do something like that. Um, it's it's crazy to me. Like, why am I the last stop? Why is this program the last stop? Why aren't people getting educated under, you know, watching this video? Why aren't people sharing this video uh, with somebody that they know is suffering from autoimmune issues or POTS and looking at the science behind exactly what it is that we do? And why don't all of us have somebody and you might you might have somebody that's supporting you and your search for answers. Right. But I love the fact that Dana self advocated for herself. This is the piece I'm thinking you're selling yourself short. She said, I'm going to move hell or high water and I'm going to do this. And you made it happen. 26 year old. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I mean, I just recommend to anybody else out there to kind of take the reins on your health and don't wait to get it done. You know, I thought, Oh, maybe I'll wait a year or two. I'll save up some more money to be able to comfortably afford the program. But I'm like, I'm not going to live another year with these symptoms. I want my life back now. What's the year of your life worth? Exactly. What is another three ER visits going to pay cost you? Right. 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 I love that. So many people, uh, you know, are expressing that they're dealing with this. So again, um, you know, it's great to hear from you, Dana, to say, don't wait. Christina, do you, do you have anything to say to anybody who might've been in the same spot that you were at four and a half years ago? It's so worth it. Um, I mean, six years ago, I couldn't imagine. I, I really felt really hopeless and thought I, I was really worried I was going to end up bedridden and not able to take care of my kids. And now it's a whole new life. I'm really, thank you. Thank you for you two for sharing this. And Christina, just full circle moment is I just... It, knowing you as I've known you in the last four and a half years, I can't imagine you laying in bed hopeless and debilitated, worried that you're going to be dependent on everybody else for the rest of your life because you're one kick-ass girl boss. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the fact that your kids really, I mean, I remember seeing your kids in the mastermind call um, helping out and you were always posting pictures of the kids helping you with the food, all that. I mean, your family really jumped in and supported you with this. Yeah. I, and the, the blood sugar piece, I mean, they will remind me, like, I need a protein with this. I need to balance this. And it's been really good. My son just left for college. He just started college yesterday. So, you know, he went ahead and, like, was taking some stuff with him to be able to eat healthier in his, in his dorm room. Because he said, Mom, if I don't eat well, I don't feel well. They're watching. They're watching. All of you guys out there, they're watching. Um so uh, what I'd love to do is give you guys the opportunity. If you guys want to learn more about what it is that we do, we have posted the link for you to start a chat with our team. Um, why don't you click the links, just start a chat with our team. We'd love to learn more about you to see if and how we can help because it isn't just pots that we deal with. I don't just eat pots for breakfast. Apparently I eat rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, lupus, Sjogren's, Hashimoto's. <laughs> I eat a lot of breakfast apparently, but I love that. Thank you for the two of you, because this is, I hope in the audience, you guys are getting really educated. You will never see another conversation like this that educated you about POTS because nobody else knows this. So this is truly secret sauce coming from uh, our two ninjas down here and two ninja rock stars down here. And I hope you guys are understanding that one of them, I think one of my superpowers, I see patterns where other people don't, and I love to teach it to make it really simple and easy to understand. So everybody um this is amazing and thank you so much for the two of you for your time generosity and your vulnerability as well christina and dana is there anything you wanted to say to dr maggie as we close it out yes just a huge huge thank you like i honestly owe my life i feel like to you and your program it's empowered me in so many ways and i actually have hope for the future and what my health will be like because of you and just thank you for having this forum as well so other people can learn. I love how your mission is really to spread it and make it accessible for as many people as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate how much you share your knowledge. And I mean, like I said, I was stalking you for a while and I was just amazed by your story. And I was just so excited to join your program and it has just paid off. And I, and I still learn from you all the time, four and a half years later. 
<laughs> Thank you, you too. All right, everybody, that's a wrap. Um, there's a link to start a chat with our team. And if you haven't joined our Facebook group, join our Facebook group. And those of you that are watching, if you know somebody that really needs to hear this, put their name in the comment section um, so they get tagged and notified um, that uh, so they can watch this video later. So that's a wrap, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.